Hi, I'm Jim. And I'm Ellen. And we're bringing the mountain bike race experience to you. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new, I'm Sid. And I am Mackie. And on this channel, we're sharing the mountain bike race experience with you. In fact, it is going on right It is. If you us. see people rolling by, those are people <laughs> racing. The Oz Trails Off-Road in Bentonville, Arkansas is the final race of the Epic Ride Series, the premier mountain bike marathon race series in the U.S. It features three days of racing. A pro-only fat tire criterium on Friday night, amateur races on Saturday, and a 50-mile pro race on Sunday, which has a $60,000 cash purse. Today Kinda is weird. day two of the Oz Trails off-road. If you haven't seen our video of Mackie racing the fat tire crit, that happened yesterday. There'll be a link somewhere. Over here. Um, today no, is pretty exciting because both of my parents are racing the amateur races. My name is Jim. I'm Sid's dad. I'm Ellen, Sid's mom. The way the Epic Rides events work is they have an amateur race day and a pro race day, which is awesome because it allows us to spectate and if my parents come race, they race on a different days. So that's super cool. They're both racing in the 60 plus category. What motivated you to do this race? To well, we knew you guys were race. coming, so we thought we'd meet up. And then I saw that they had a distinguished category, which meant they were letting us 60 plusers have a podium shot. And I thought, oh, wouldn't that be cool? They're really excited to do this event because it has that category. A lot of mountain bike events just have a 50 plus, which if you are in your 60s, you probably know that that's totally not fair. My dad always complains about the young guys. You know, I haven't worked for a podium in a long time because most of the time they're 45 and older. So this was really cool. And How I'm old are you? Are you willing I'm to admit 67. that? 67. So, not getting any younger. And my mom is racing the 30 mile. I decided since we were coming here, I'm tired of just sitting around while everybody else is racing, you know, and it gives me a chance to get out on the trails where there's support and people, because when I ride by myself, I sort of ride short. So I thought I'd try it. My longest race before this had been, I think, 20 miles, maybe 10 years ago. My dad is racing the 50 mile. Which is the one I will be racing. Tomorrow. Yeah, so it's the same course. There is the same course as the pros if you do the full distance, and then they also have a 15 in the 30. Trying to give options for everyone, regardless of your ability and experience level and racing experience. Yeah, now we're gonna try to go figure out how we are gonna spectate this race, because it's hard to spectate a 50 mile bike race. <laughs> so we told you guys it was cold. We're gonna have to scrape the window. In October, in Arkansas, what's up with that? We also have a slight complication, and then we have a flat tire. So here we go, trying to fix this flat tire. Is it doing anything? Yeah, it's going up. I have more quarters if we need them. Do you think we're gonna make it there in time? I hope so. I'm right with you, Jim. All right, go, go, go. Earlier in the year, Ellen and I got a coach, Mike Derner. We just proposed that he get us ready for uh, Rebecca's ride as a duo. And then I asked him if he'd continue working with me while I worked for this event. He had me doing a lot more intervals than I would have thought. And, you know, intervals are something I haven't done in my own training very often. So um, we were doing, I was doing intervals three times a week and one long ride. And that was really nice because it gave me, you know, you know, the interval work is short time. So it was pretty neat to have enough time to do the work around the house, do the things I needed to do and still get myself pretty much ready for the race. I was uh, in pretty good endurance shape from having trained for the Rebecca's Private Idaho 60 mile gravel grinder, um, which I'd uh, done with Jim, with Coach Sterner. So I felt like I had that. So when we got back to Ohio after Idaho, I started concentrating on getting back on trails because I felt like my trail skills were bad. And I did some interval work on the bike path. I did one 24 miler with some guys where I tried to ride steady. So that gave me some confidence that distance wouldn't be the problem. It would be more other stuff, passing people, falling off, those things. <laughs> Is there anything that you needed to do with your training as a distinguished racer 
I just left it up to Mike. I think he uh, probably kept that in mind what he was dealing with. I don't know. I didn't have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you ask for at 67? <laughs> The night before, you're sort of thinking, why am I doing this? I could just be writing for fun and not be nervous and not be in this crowd, and um, this is silly. But I really got into it, and the crowd uh, dissipated pretty fast. I mean, the first section of trail was like a struggle bus where everybody was in back with me or like slipping on the rocks and stopping and everything. But after that, it, um, yeah, it was pretty much single file, and the passing wasn't a problem, and it was just a gorgeous day to be on the trail. So it worked out. Like, the stress... Once you got on the bike, about 10 minutes later, the stress was over. Everybody was struggling. I didn't see, there were not many people talking. It was a pretty silent group of, of warriors out there on the trail. It was really neat because I think Mike sort of elevated me in the group a little bit beyond the normal people where I would have been holding conversations with them. We were, we were quiet in this ride. <laughs> <laughs> My race strategy, such as it was, <laughs> yes. was to ride smooth and steady and to work the uphills because I'm real strong on uphills and to not get all flustered when I blew something technical, which was going to happen. And there's something I'd pre-ridden that I hadn't done well a couple days ago. And in the race, I just went right up. It was like five switchbacks in a row. When I did that sort of near the beginning of the race, I was like, hey, I got it. You know, hard part's over. Um, and, you know, the hard part wasn't over, but it was good to have a little confidence booster at the beginning there. I'm riding an intense primer, which is a, considered a trail bike. It's probably a little heavier than was needed for the, these trail conditions, but um, I'm okay with having 140 front fork and 130 um, in the back. It's nice and comfy for me, and it makes me feel sort of safer. And when I get in rocks, it, it gets me out of trouble. Dropper post, great bike carbon fiber. So even though it's... Um, you know, got that much travel, it's still really light and nice geometry for me. Just, it fits me great. Um, I tried a lot of bikes on, so I encourage people if they're buying a new bike to demo things because you really don't know till you ride them. I rode uh, the flat spots as fast as I could. I rode the spots where I felt really safe as fast as I could and I just didn't panic when I put my foot down over some of the um, watersheds or where it's wet roots or something like that. I moved into a group of people couple single speeders I was riding with and we'd pass each other. There were some people I changed places with four or five times. I seem to recall you were worried that you were going to be way off the back or that everyone else was going to ride these technical things perfect, but that wasn't what happened, was it? Yeah, in fact, like I said, the first section, the uh, Blowing Springs Trail, everybody was off in front of me. It was like 10 people in the way. I might very well have gotten up it. <laughs> had to stop. So I realized that, you know, people were going to struggle with it as much as I was. Came to a road crossing. Some guy was sort of working out of his pack and and I looked up and there were like three buzzards circling right above him and I just made the comment I said dude you better get going the buzzards are circling and he looked up and and uh, smiled and you know about five minutes later he comes grunting up to me and he passes me and he goes you know the story about the bear and I just if you haven't heard that story it's basically you don't have to worry about the bear unless you're last and so as he passed me that was his comment and I thought that was really Funny. <laughs> I'm really in good shape for the uphill, so that was fun to just pass up the um, middle-aged guys on the uphill, and then just give them a little space when they zoom down, because I'm a little, um, I'm more cautious on the downhills. I struggled near the end, of course, because in my mind, I thought the last seven miles were gonna be flatter and easier. I don't know, I thought they were gonna be more bike pathy, and they were wet and muddy and horrible. So yeah, the last five miles, I looked really bad. Didn't have too many people pass me in that last three, four miles where I fell apart, but. <laughs> Probably would be in trouble with Coach Sterner because I sort of forgot to eat and drink. I drank only maybe uh, two inches of my hydration bottle because it got all muddy and it was hard to grab. <laughs> I haven't even checked my Osprey hydration pack, but I drank some of that. I only had, I had less than one pack of scratch juice <laughs> and I spit out my raspberry fig bark because it was so dry. So really I did this race on less than a pack of scratch. I didn't stop at all. I took my jacket off once and I stopped to give some racer a CO2 cartridge. Um, but I've been training with Jim and he doesn't stop. Like, so all summer when we were gravel grinding training, we just 
right, you just don't stop with Jim. So I wasn't gonna stop during this race at the, even at the aid station. <laughs> Woo woo! Can you tilt? I had a great time. Good. Yeah. It wasn't that hard. Good. Yay. Did you try that coconut watermelon? That's a hard. Is it good? Yeah. Switch, because I don't like my Okay, so I got to be on the podium along with this big bottle of hot sauce, if you see the picture. <laughs> there weren't any other women in my category. Um, I thought one had signed up, but nobody else finished. And so that was fun, and I got all this cool swag. I, I felt a little undeserving, but I, I took it, my tire, my helmet, my free stuff. I ended up third in my group, and I'm, I'm super excited with that. Like I said, I haven't been on a podium in 10 years, and that was a, a, a really neat experience. And the promoters and the promotion and the people in the, in the group were all made me feel like it was worth the effort. I had a really good time, 343. It would have gotten me fifth in the younger, the uh, master's women. <laughs> the young ladies category. Yeah, I, young ladies. Think it, I think it was even top 20 in the open women, so the time was pretty respectable. Yeah. Being third, there were two faster and two slower than me on that podium. It was all within five minutes. And when you see that, you go, hmm, next race, you know? I'd have to talk to Mike about maybe being a little faster. <laughs> what would be your advice to other people in their distinguished, 60s? Distinguished, other distinguished, other racers distinguished racers. Who might Get out and race. Something. I'm telling you, it, it was so much fun. For any women in the distinguished category, 60 and over, who haven't really contemplated bike racing, because they think, it's just for young people should just do it because everybody was supportive. Everybody was super supportive. And if you think of it more as a ride, a chance to just ride new trails, see how steady you can be instead of like, ah, I have to perform. You know, I think at the front end, everybody's working towards that finish line trying to win. And But when you're just in the group and having a good time struggling together, um, it's worth it. Yeah, it's just it's really fun to be out there with everybody instead of being on the sidelines. So if I had any advice to the people thinking about it, get out there and race. Hi, I'm Jim. Hi, I'm Ellen. And we're bringing the mountain bike race to you. No, no. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> try again, try again. Hi, I'm Jim. Hi, I'm Ellen. Okay, start over. Hey, wait, wait. Three. Okay, wait. So got a lot of so, yeah. And you don't have to say, hi, I'm Jim. <laughs> hi, I'm Jim. And I'm Ellen. And we're bringing the mountain bike race experience to you. Nailed it. Good. Well done, guys. Well done. Yeah. <laughs>